Welcome and thank you for standing by. Currently, all participants are in our listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your host, Crystal Jimerson. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on using the Census Survey Explorer to get started. My name is Crystal Jimerson, and I'm a data dissemination specialist here at the U.S. Census Bureau. I want to thank you for joining us today for the It's All in the Tools webinar series. This new series was created by the Census Academy team here at the Census Bureau. You can register for any of the workshop webinars by accessing census.gov. We will post the workshops monthly for early registration. Just visit census.gov slash academy. Please note the seating is limited first come first served basis. We think these hands on exercise based workshops will be a valuable opportunity for you to learn from our experts about how to access the Census Bureau data tools and resources. Before I introduce today's speaker, let's go over a few important housekeeping rules. As mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded. For your convenience, it will be uploaded to our Census Academy site with all supplemental materials relating to the webinar. In terms of how to ask questions during the webinar, you can submit your written questions using the Q&A panel, which is at the bottom center or the right side of your WebEx screen. Please take a moment to locate that now. Once you've found the Q&A panel, make sure you choose All Panelists from the drop-down menu. This will ensure we see your question. Don't send your question to an individual panelist. Also, we ask that you do not include any personal or business identifiable information with your question. Now let's talk about the chat panel. Look for that on your screen now. It's probably right next to the Q&A panel. Definitely keep that chat panel open also because this is where we will provide key links and other resources. Keep in mind, you won't be able to respond to the chat. Chat is just for us to send you links and other resources. In the chat box, we will be sharing throughout the webinar the link to our evaluation. We are very interested in hearing from you how we are doing. My colleague, Viviana Garcia, will be monitoring the Q&A panel. As time allow, we will answer your questions directly through the Q&A panel, or we will share your question with the presenter to respond to throughout the workshop. If we don't get to all questions with the response during the webinar, we will post the questions and responses with the webinar materials on the census.gov slash academy site within 30 business days. Again, as mentioned before, near the end of the webinar, we'll put into the chat a link to our evaluation so you can tell us how we did today. We hope you'll take the time to complete as we are always looking forward to improve our training. As you know, we are in a virtual environment and sometimes technical difficulties might occur. If you are having issues, Try a different browser, such as Chrome, or consider logging out and coming back into the session. If you are having audio issues, try selecting the computer audio or calling into the webinar via phone. Now, I would like to introduce you to our speaker, Mary Leisenring. Thanks again for being here today. Mary, you may begin. Well, hello there, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with you today to um, present this awesome, pretty new tool. It's been released in the past year or so uh, to you and to learn how to use the tool and then take the next step and go further into looking for the data once you find the surveys that may be meeting your needs. 
Um, we have a very full and fun participatory workshop for you today. We may use up those full 90 minutes, so I hope you have some water nearby and you're cozy and settled in um, with us. <clears throat> Before we get started with the workshop, um, I have, want to tell you about two programs we have at the Census Bureau. We have, first we have Census Academy, who's the sponsor of this webinar series, It's All in the Tools. This team of learning and development experts develop live webinars and self-guided video-based learning materials, such as short form videos called Data Gems and comprehensive courses. So be sure to check out all the courses and data gem videos that they have available for you uh, after the course or the workshop. Then we have um, a team of data dissemination specialists who live all across the country that can deliver training to your organizations. Um, you can create request this service through our request a training form on Census Academy's homepage. We also have an Ask Data phone line and email address for individual questions. So Census Academy brings all of your educational needs into one place. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. The overall goal of today's webinar is to introduce you to this tool and show you how to use it. We will share a brief background on the development of the tool simply because knowing where you came from to where we are now will help you gain a greater appreciation and understanding for what the tool can do for you. This tool is most certainly filling a need and it can help you save time in your search. Hopefully, you've watched the pre-work or prerequisite video that we sent out in advance. Um, so we're going to dive into some practice exercises pretty quickly to make sure that you become proficient in using the tool. So while doing this, <coughs> excuse me, I will share some troubleshooting possibilities throughout. The good news is that the tool is designed to be easy to use, but we're going to share some common situations and roadblocks that you might come across. Last, we offered the, uh, a webinar last year when the tool first launched, and the natural next question from our participants was, where do we go from here once we have found a list of potential surveys? So throughout this workshop, we will cover some scenarios where we're going to have you click through to surveys and see where you can find some data from there. All right. So. A little background before we dive in. This tool was conceptualized when a colleague and I discussed the best way to teach data seekers what topics were available across our many surveys. We have over 100 topics and over 120 surveys. And there are topics overlap between surveys. So you'll see, um, if you look in the teal section here, you'll see topics that overlap with uh, what's in the burgundy or red section at the bottom. So one is the ACS and the other is the decennial census. Um, ACS is American Community Survey. And so we have that situation where there's many topics, many surveys. And then when you add another layer of information, so each survey may have um, many geographies, one or more geographies associated with it. Um, then you also need to know what the frequency of releases, so is the survey annual release, monthly, quarterly, et cetera. Um, and then we also think it's relevant to know when the survey actually started, so how far back does data go? So these were the questions that we knew you needed. Now, before Census Survey Explorer, there was no quick way to comprehensively overview our surveys and the data in them. Data users and researchers had um, a couple of options. They could um, go to our list of surveys and programs, which is multiple web pages long, um, or they could use the census.gov search bar. And the video in the background uh, is playing, it's showing you um, how someone might use that list to then click into a survey and explore for the information that Census Survey Explorer provides. So each of these options, um, whether you're using the survey and programs list or the search bar on census.gov required multiple clicks and it sends you down a pretty long pathway of research to discover the topics, the geographies, and the frequencies for each survey. And then there's no guarantee that you would even click into the right surveys uh, that might have or all of the surveys that were, are completely answering your question. So then 
get some the next slide going. So then here's where we are now. You now have a tool that helps you narrow down the choices of what surveys to research in a really efficient way. So you can use the drop down filter menus to um, set your criteria and generate a full and complete baseline to select from and dive into deeper. So the most sought after sought after information is available at a glance. And now we have the key survey information and full descriptions in view versus just a couple of lines. Um, so it improves the searchability of um, when you go in and you search for something. Uh, we also have um, another unexpected consequence, which is you may find or discover a lesser known survey that you weren't thinking of yet. For example, you, if you search crime, you might not think of juvenile crime. However, there is a survey in the tool that covers that, and so you might want to add that to your inquiry or your research. All right, so one more slide before we get moving together. Um, before we go to the tool, I want to talk about the most common misconceptions about the tool, which can lead to some you know, frustration if you're using the tool incorrectly. So sometimes what happens is we get users who simply just don't understand the purpose and functionality of the tool. It's this tool, if we uh, look to the right side of the screen first in blue, um, let's talk about what the Census Survey Explorer is not. Um, this is not a tool that uh, will get you straight to statistics type of data. It's a precursory step. The fact is, is you might actually want to skip past the CSE and go straight into a data tool and look for data. And that's totally fine. You may have a very simple statistic you're looking for, and you can go to the census.gov search bar or quick facts or data.census.gov, um, and you might search, you know, population of your county, right? But um, you, what the tool isn't is a data source for specific statistics. It's not a search engine outside of the, the uh, context of the tool itself. Um, and you also can't look up specific geographies. So um, while you can look and see if a survey is available at the county level, you're not going to be able to look up your county if you were in like Fairfax County or Harford County, right? Um, so you can't go in and type in specific geographies. You can only search by what type of geography. What Census Survey Explorer is, is a data source so of metadata. It's data about the data. And so what on the left-hand side here, what you can use this tool for is to find a comprehensive list of what surveys may have the data you need. And then you may also use it when you have need a restart button. Like you went into a tool and you found some dead ends and then maybe, okay, let's regroup and start again. Um, I also love the, the tool when I know I'm about a survey and I just really wanna find out what that metadata is like super quick. So I will go in and I'll just type in CPS, which it, um, um, you can use acronyms in the tool because I've included, or we've included them in there. So um, it's current population survey and you can type in CPS and it'll pull right up and then you'll see like okay here are the geographies that the CPS is offered for and so I find it to be the quickest way just to like look up one survey and I know what survey I'm looking for. Um, that's probably the most frequent way I use it but um, the other way you could use it is you just want to play around and see in general what we have. I think it's a great way to like explore our data. Okay so <clears throat> we are going to be very brief in the demonstration so that we can jump right in. Both you, the participants, and I are now going to have to sort of go back and forth between this presentation um, in, uh, in the workshop here and then also to another window um, where we're going to open up the tool and some web sites. So what we're going to need to do is sort of escape out of um, the full screen if you have this on full screen and you're going to need to go to your web browser and open a new window so be careful not to close this window and go you know search right inside because then you'll be like leaving the webinar so open a new window and go to uh, www.census.gov forward slash survey explorer 
And, you know, if you happen to be lucky enough to have an extra monitor, like that's awesome because you can have like one on each screen. But if not, you'll have to kind of figure out how to navigate between the two screens. <coughs> so I'll be doing the same thing <coughs> as I go back and forth between the tool for us. Okay, so hopefully you're with me. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about as we sort of move through the tool is that let's talk about the search bar the search bar can be helpful i find it most helpful when i know exactly what i'm looking for like the name of the survey so i mentioned cps earlier i type in cps and i scroll down and it, that survey pulled right up um or if i want to search a word veteran veterans um, I'm going to search and I see there's four surveys I do want to give you a tip right away um, if you take off the s of a word you may get some more surveys that populate one two three so now we have like you know six seven eight surveys that populated when I search veteran instead of veterans so I always recommend taking that s off because you're um, the survey may have a topic that's veterans, but if the, the word veteran is actually in the description, um, you know, two different words, you might pull up different surveys is all. All right, so here we have the drop down menus. Um, you, I like them because if you're new to finding census data, it teaches you how you should be framing your question, meaning that uh, you get to think about which of these drop downs matter to your data question you might not have thought about that before right so this sort of teaches you how you have to think about your question you have to think about your geography you have to think about how often the data is released um, most frequently you're going to find that the topic is like most important to you and you may if you turn up zero um zero research results you're going to have to play around with the geography and frequency to see if you can get some results to pull up and you may have to prioritize one or the other. So we think about that too. Next, we have the guidance pages across the top. These provide definitions and uh, lists of topics and lists of geographies and instructions. So um, you would go, if you click on a guidance page, then it's gonna provide definitions for you. And I'm gonna point out that here we have other, and there's a whole list of geographies that fall under other. So you find block, block group, census tract. These are super popular um, in terms of, they're popular because uh, a lot of people really like to have uh, low level geography for like small, smaller geographies and um, in size. Uh, but they're not uh, prolifically available. So even though they're popular, they're not necessarily super available because of privacy reasons. So they do fall under other, other popular other ones would be places. So that's like your cities and towns or um, congressional districts, school districts, those are all fall under other. And so if you go back to the drop down of geography, you see the checkbox other, and so that's that guidance page is going to really help you out figure out like what other means and it's going to be the same for frequencies um and then we have the list of subtopics within and underneath of a topic and there's some instructions on you know when you might want to use the topic first versus the subtopic first i'm not going to go into that today you can read those instructions on your own or hopefully watch the data gem where we talked a little bit about it all right so let's jump into an example i'm going to close this window so we can see more surveys um and you know if viviana is helping us out with our um chat so if uh if there's anything you need to stop me for, Viviana, please go for it. Um, hopefully we, we have, don't have too many questions yet. Um, so we're going to jump into an example where we're going to find data at the zip code level. We want economic business data at the zip code level, and we want it to be monthly. So we're going to go for um, zip code here down at the bottom, and then we're going to go to monthly. And then and we already have now we see that there's no surveys that pulled up but i'm going to go forward with our all the selections and business i said right so we we i suppose the scenario what happens when you don't have you know what you need so if you're following along you can 
Um, so make those selections in the tool. And what you can do is play around a little bit and say, I'm going to say, you know, I really want the data for the zip code. Um, so I'm going to say that annual is good enough. We're going to back it out of the monthly and kind of expand us up to annual. You have to make sure you uncheck monthly and then we have some surveys to look at. Okay. All right, so that's in general, like how the tour of the tool, not too much to, to see. So I'm gonna press the reset search button here all the way to the right. And that's something that's also a common mistake people forget to, to reset their search and then they don't understand why things are popping up. And so, you know, when, you're, when you run a search, you'll see your selections that were down there below the blue section here. All right, so here's your first exercise. We're going to have you go into the tool and I'm going to, I'm asking you, how would you find what surveys have data on the education level of residents in my county, your county, I should say your county. So the first question is, what are you going to check off in Side the tool. And then the second question is how many surveys populate? And you can feel free to type your answers into the QA if you have them. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to answer that question. All right, a few more seconds. Hopefully it was pretty easy to figure out. Okay, so the answer would be, and under the subtopics drop down, we're gonna scroll down and find education because we're looking for um, the education level in our county. And then the geographies, you're gonna select county. So that was pretty easy. And how many surveys populated did anyone type in type into the Q&A? Let me open it up. Three, I see a three, in there. a seven. Yep, we have a seven, um, Praveen, thank you. Yep, that's right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven answers. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna add like a bonus to this and we're gonna find out how would you add to the search for Native Americans? So now you wanna know the education attainment for Native Americans in your county. Um, go ahead and you can type into the Q&A if, you know, if you think you know what to do to add that um, into there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the tool and give you a little um, tip here. So you're gonna, someone said to add demographic. That, you know, yeah, you could go with that, <coughs> actually. Um, the other thing that you could do is actually just add the another subtopic. So you can pick as many subtopics as you want. You can pick as many, anything you want, um, multiple, in, and each drop down. So I'm gonna go scroll down and we're actually gonna select race um, from here. And so that would be probably your best bet. And so I'm curious if anybody uh, typed in Native American, Native American in, in the search bar or if anybody uh, tried to find it here in the drop down menu. And you're not alone if you did that. And so this is one of the situations much like you can't search for your individual county like Fairfax County. You can only search for surveys at the county level. You can't search for an individual race box in here. You would just click on race. And one of the ways that you could go and find an answer would be a, a search term would be the go to the topics and subtopics guidance page. And you can really read through and see um, what's there so that we make sure the terminology is aligned. So um, that would be the right way to kind of go about that um, because if it has race data it's going to have data a survey will have data on all the races native american um or um 
you know, uh, Asian, etc. So I'm going to reset the search and we're going to go to our next exercise. Wait, guys, I'm go I hope I, the pace is going okay for you. If I um, need to slow down, please let me know. Um, and so here was the answer is to select race in the PowerPoint, which I'm going to, this PowerPoint will, after 30 business days, um, we post the webinar recording and the PowerPoint will be in there for you so that you can use it as a reference. All right, so the next exercise is we're going to use the CSC Census Survey Explorer to determine the best choice. So for which surveys have business data for veteran-owned businesses? So the questions that we, I want you to think about and answer are, what selections should you make in the tool? How many surveys populate? And then which survey do you think out of what populates may have this information of um, veteran-owned business information? And so again, I'm going to give you maybe a little bit longer than 30 seconds on this one since you have to read. So maybe like a minute. I see some answers in there already. I see a slow down. Okay, I'll do my best to slow down a little bit here. Um, yes, I can show the question again. All right, what selections should you make? How many surveys populate? And which survey has, do you think is the best one for the information of, of our question, which is, what surveys have business data for veteran-owned businesses? Okay, Doc. So. All right, let's go back into the tool and see if we can figure this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the drop down. And I, this time I'm going to show you a different way to use the drop down. Um, you can actually type in, there's a little search bar within the subtopics drop down, and you can type in here because there is quite a long list and veteran is V all the way down to the bottom. So I don't feel like scrolling down to the bottom. So I'm going to type in veteran. Uh, start typing it. And we have two uh, potential checkboxes that we could use. If you wanted to go for a more broad search just to see every survey that had uh, veterans, uh, data on veterans, you could check here. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with veteran owns, which indicates a veteran owned business, right? And then you're going to also, hold on a sec. <clears throat> you're also going to select business. So I can go back into the search bar now and type in business and select business. And let's see what we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four surveys. So hopefully everybody got four when they uh, searched here. So now what surveys would have that data? And the answer actually is when you read through is all four. So I'm going to provide a bonus question. So when you read through, we're going to say, okay, we've got veteran-owned businesses really kind of all here. The difference is, is these are more business, larger business who has employees and non-employer businesses are businesses that have no employees. So like an independent uh, contractor of some sort, right? Um, and this has a little bit of both, this survey. So when we go back into our PowerPoint, I'm going to pose a bonus challenge here. So when you read through these surveys, um, what do you think is the best option? Um, and so it kind of depends on what you want. It's going to depend if you want uh, the most current data or historical data. So let's go into those surveys and read a little bit about it together and figure out like what we want. And then once we figure that out, we'll go into that survey and see uh, about like what data is in it. 
Okay, so back into the tool again. All right, so the annual business survey provides estimates on selected characteristics of employer businesses and business owners by sex, ethnicity, race, and veteran status. So it looks like we're getting employer business um, information with by these demographics. And I'm gonna click on the more button and that's gonna open up some information that was hidden that didn't quite fit in, into the card. So you get a fuller list of all the subtopics and there's actually some more text here. And so this survey started since 2018 and it replaced the SBO, uh, which is the, um, I believe, survey of business owners and the annual survey of entrepreneurs. So interestingly enough, we do have expired replaced surveys in this tool. Here's the annual survey of entrepreneurs and here was the survey of business owners. So this survey has gone back to 1972, the survey of business owners, um, and it kind of represented this survey over here, Nesti, and this one. So there are you know, these historical surveys. So you do want to open it up and find out, okay, is the survey still active or not? So really, to answer our question, it, ma it matters what year we're, you're talking about. Did you want historical data from before 2018, or did you want um, more current data. So I'm going to assume that we want more current data. So what survey would we want then? It was the annual business survey, right? So let's click into that. <clears throat> All right. Hey Mary, so, before you move yeah. on, can I read some questions here? Absolutely. Please do. All right. So um, one of the questions on here is, how do I get the tool to do the search after topics are selected? So that it automatically searches for you. So every time you make a selection or you type something, it's gonna pull, it pulls the results. Um, so let me, let me do something a little bit more exclusive here. So I'm in the tool again, um, demoing. Um, I'm going to go with something like quarterly. Oops, hold on. And so it instantly changed once we searched. So <laughs> sometimes when you make a selection, you don't see much happening because your selections had the same results, right? But then sometimes you make a selection and it instantly changes for you. So you don't need to hit and you don't really need to hit enter or um, there's no search button. It just automatically um, filters everything. Much like if we typed in, um, let me type in, trying to think of a survey name. I'm just doing ACS, ACS. It instantly pulled up the ACS. So it makes a change every letter you type it, it changed if you know this. So there isn't there isn't any search um, bar needed. I hope that I hope that gets to the core of the question for you. Any other questions, Biff? Okay, here's one that says for the vet question, when I selected veteran and business in the subtopic topic link, no surveys were returned. Mm, did they you might have forgotten to reset your search from the last search, possibly? Um, would be my best guess of why nothing came back. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the other one is, how do we know what values are available in the race? In other words, how do I know subtopic, subtopic name for the Native American? Right. So we um, that might have been uh, asked before I addressed it. But yeah, so when we go in, if a survey has uh, race data, it will have the standard races that we collect data for. So um, there's a standard list. I could probably, when you know what, when we go into data.census.gov later in another exercise, what I'll do is pull up a table that has race for us, and we'll take a look at what the race categories the census offers. But um, we kind of have our standardized race sets that that data is provided for and so Native American is if we offer race data that should be in there um, under um, 
Alaska Native uh, American Indian, I think. We'll, we'll take a look at it together uh, to make sure that I'm correct about how it's listed, but um, hopefully that answers the question. Any others? Um, so it says, do the, do the surveys present non-duplicated businesses across the four surveys? Or do you recommend one business survey that and that has almost all business owners? Is the SBO for current or most comprehensive of all types of businesses? So it's oh boy. Like, yeah, it's several questions in one. <laughs> um, I don't, you know I might need to think about that a little bit and get back to you. But we did we did that. This was for veteran owned and and business, right? So let me pull that back up again. Um, so and let me see if I can actually open the question and read it again. Okay. Oh, why are the two values for it? It's actually business and business opening and closing. So they they actually are two different. So one is just a general business information and the other one is business and it goes to two lines and this is business opening and closing. Somebody mentioned why are there two values for business? Um, you know what, Viviana, I can't, I can't find the question in the Q and A. <laughs> so I don't know that I It's can okay. It's okay. I'm we, gonna, we can always I'm go back. I'm going to address that question on the back yeah. end if I can um, yeah, for, yeah. for you guys. But um, yeah, the ABS is going to be your best choice for most businesses unless we're talking about uh, non-employer businesses, right? Okay. So let me, we are going to be going into the annual business survey and we're going to look and see what how data is available in the biz, annual business survey so i wanted to talk about that a little bit with you um because we publish data in like lots of different ways and so i want to make sure you understand all those um when you come into a survey i won't say every single program survey or program is structured exactly the same within um, our website but most consistently, you're going to find um, a navigation menu and you're going to find something about data. So look in your navigation menu here on the left, or sometimes there's a navigation menu that goes horizontally across the top, depending on which website ecosystem you're in. And so um, if you click on data, we're going to see how the annual business survey is offering data up. So one thing, we, the first thing we see is annual business survey APIs. The Census Bureau's application programming infer, interface, this API, allows users to create custom queries. Users can embed these statistics into web or mobile apps. That's pretty advanced, but that is a way that ABS data is available. The next uh, option is ABS tables. And then if you scroll down further, it talks about that NSD that was also in your um, results that pulled up. So um, it looks like the NSD is also offered through an API and tables on the same page. So um, just an FYI, I'm gonna click on tables. We're not gonna go into APIs today, but um, if you click on a table, then um, you can come in here and like click on any table that seems uh, of interest to you so you can check out that. Um, then let's go back to the PowerPoint again. So I'm, you know, go back to the webinar if you're in the tool. Um, and I'm going to actually present. I can get out of here real quick. Okay. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about the ways this this whole conversation wants me to um, talk about the ways that we we offer our data real quick before we go into some more exercises. So first, programs commonly are going to list links to tables for you, much like we just saw in the ABS. Um, sometimes when you click on a table link, 
you're going to be downloading a table directly, like an Excel spreadsheet or a CVS directly to your computer. And then sometimes when you click on a table link, it might take you directly into a data tool like data.census.gov and opens the table inside of a data tool. And you can always download data from inside the data tool as well to your computer. Okay, so that's one way that you might see tables, very common. Another way that you're, you might see data is a data tool or visualization. And so if you click on the data link inside the survey, um, you might see a list of data tools, right? And so one thing that you can find a data tool uh, through those individual surveys, but you could also, if you're interested in exploring our data tools and applications, you can just go to our um, census.gov forward slash data forward slash data slash tools, or, and, or you can navigate to it from our data and map section on our webpage, and you get a whole big long list of all of our data tools that are available to you. The other thing that's right here on this data tools and apps page uh, is a little link uh, to visualizations. And so individual programs may have uh, also links and, and um, pictures of our their visualizations. So a visualization can come in a couple ways, more like an infographic, um, which is more static, like this Happy New Year is a static infographic. It just provides some simple statistics, um, basic like just like a picture, or you might have something that's more interactive. Uh, interactive visualization, you can make selections and click click on geographies, zoom in, zoom out. Um, the difference is, is with, uh, between a data visualization, an interactive one, and, and a data tool is that a visualization um, will have a little bit less data and it's usually more focused or zoomed in into a particular data sets. Um, so it has less data and less functionality in general. But it is nice because often they, it meets a very specific need. Then the other way you could find data uh, when you click on a data link um, or get, get into a program is a publication or report, some sort of summary, right? So. A uh, good example is our income and poverty report that we re release every year. Um, so it's a nice big long report that offers narrative summaries and some data and charts and everything. <clears throat> then we have raw data um, where you can use or a census API. So raw data, are, you know, you can get uh, micro data sets, um, tables, and um, you could also use the file transfer protocol. It's called the FTP. Um, these are pretty, these are very advanced methods of accessing data using an API or downloading micro data to do perform your own sort of analysis, but um, it's a service that we offer. Um, you can use a tool called MDAT to get uh, microdata, and then and we have the FTP. And the API is a little different uh, because you're actually creating website URLs that you would plug into an application and it pulls uh, data into like a website or into a mobile app for you. So um, we definitely have a, a large variety of ways that we can offer data uh, for a variety of experience levels and analysis uh, methods. And then last, I, I want to mention the one other way uh, that you, you, one other scenario that you're going to um, see when you get into our website or you click on a survey in Survey Explorer. Um, I should cover this because if you, you, sometimes you click on the link and it might take you outside of the census website. That's because the census does many surveys for other federal programs. Um, so you're going to have to go into their websites to look for that data um, and figure out, you know, interact with their system to figure out where they put that. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go back to some exercises. <sighs> Let's take a deep breath. We're ready to work again. <laughs> so what survey has um, data for clothing, retail, business sales at the state geography level? So we've got clothing, retail, clothing, retail, business, sales, state. Those are like your keywords. There is a little bit of a trick in there. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, and then we're, we're going to talk about 
once you sort of make your selections and we look at the surveys and figure out and determine which um, survey we think is the best that best that meets our needs, let's look at the data in there and, and find out how often the data are released for that information. After that, we're gonna go to that survey's website and see how their data is available. <clears throat> And so I'll give us a couple of minutes for that one. It's a lot of questions. So what survey has data for clothing retail business sales at the state geography level? Pick out a survey that you think is the best survey for what we're looking for. And let's talk about how often that data are released. Hey, Mary, there's a comment here to slow down a bit. Okay. Somebody's got it. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Anybody need more time? Right, I'm not seeing anything come in through the Q&A about needing more time. So hopefully we're, we're about there. All right, so I'm gonna go into the tool. So we're gonna go through the answer together. So. All right. <clears throat> Reset search, and I am going to select state. And then we're going to go through, and I'm going to go ahead and just select economic. And then I'm going to go and look for retail and um, retail right, because we mentioned retail. And we also mentioned business, so we can do business. Um, what else can we put in there? We could put in um, monthly statement, retail sales. Oh, monthly statement, and then we're gonna go with sales. Now, I think a lot of people probably were going to be inclined to put in clothing, because I mentioned clothing, but if we type in clothing, we're there's no subtopic for that. And so again, that gets a little bit more specific. So um, there's a term called NAICS. And so um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with um, Census Bureau data, um, we business data, we, we publish a lot of statistics for in, by industry. And so a lot, the term we use for our, it's an acronym for industries is NAICS. And so you could, you could go in and select NAICS if you wanted, but let's go ahead and um, 
scroll through and see what we have. So we've got the annual business survey, which we've talked about a little bit. So that's more about demographics of um, business owners. Um, it does measure uh, R&D. Um, then we've got the survey of entrepreneurs, which is also, you know, a, the um, the older survey that was replaced by the ABS. We've got the economic census that actually has some potential economic census provides detailed information on employer businesses by data, by industry. So by industry is sort of like something we're looking for. Um, we have the economic census of island areas, but then we come across this one here, monthly state retail sales. And that seems really promising, uh, monthly state retail sales. And someone did get it in the chat, so great job. Um, if we open this up to read all about it, we're gonna see that we have total retail sales um, for the for the NAICS retail subsectors. So I think this is gonna be really our most direct um, option when we go when we look, go through these surveys there's a couple more down here um <clears throat> so let's go ahead and click on this and see what happens all right so here there is a data link i see it right here but let's scroll down because if you do scroll what's really great is that they have an interactive data visualization and so that was one of the methods that i mentioned um, in the last few slides is that um, they, an interactive visualization can be very specific and super handy if it's like covering what you really wanted to cover and so here you would um, select whatever month that you were interested in getting data for um, and then it says select NAICS and so if you click on that and you can read through all the different retail sectors we do scroll down and we can find clothing and clothing accessory store and then you could also select the state that you're interested in it does have some national level statistics for you but if you wanted to narrow it down by state then you could click on a state um, or select a state from the drop down so that is um you're probably the best option for that particular question you could go to data but um the fact that they had a nice data visualization right there was super convenient so i thought i'd mention that all right, so I'm going to reset the search button and we'll go into our next option. Does anybody have any questions about that? I do have time to pause. The clothing one was tricky. Yep, <laughs> it was a little tricky. I, I mentioned there was a trick in there. <laughs> so, um, great. Great job, everybody. <laughs> All right, next up. Uh, we are going to, oops, I'm going in the wrong direction in this PowerPoint. Hold on a sec. All right, so answer slide here, and then our next question. So we're gonna go into the tool, and we're gonna search, and then we're gonna select a survey, and then we're gonna discover the data uh location right so we're gonna try and find where the data is for that survey okay so we're gonna i'm trying to increase your level of independence for searching for the data once you find it right so the question is what survey or surveys have information about children and crime and refine your search to a survey that has data on children in residential facilities and then once you're in the program site, what would you click on to find data once you're in there? So we'll just sort of do a little independent research in there. So what surveys have information about children and crime? So use the tool to figure that out. And then once you've used the tool to find what surveys have information about children and crime, which of those surveys um, has data about children who are in residential placement or residential facilities? And you can feel free to type the answer in the chat if you have it. <coughs> yep, we've got somebody who's got it. 
So let's go into the tool and I'm going to go ahead and select. Yep, we've got a couple people out of it. Nice job. Um, okay, so we have, um, we're going to go in and find children. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in crime. Sad to think about, but um, we do have to add it on that. Hey, Mary. Yep. Uh, here it says, can you please show the answer slide 20, number 23 and also pause a few seconds on the answer slides? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, let's see, answer slide 23. Oh, that was for the last one. Um, yep. So here we, these were the selections made. So I didn't show the drop downs on this particular answer slide. Um, they show up, all the selections show up here. So we'd use all your drop downs to, to grab state, monthly, business, and retail. And then when you click on monthly state retail sales, you use the drop down, the NAICS drop down to select clothing. All right. So um, back into the tool. So a couple people got it right in the chat. So the when you read through, there's four surveys that populate. And when you read through, the one that sort of meets the needs, Census of Juveniles and Residential Placement, it collects detailed information on youth residing in detention, correctional, and other shelter facilities. So you could do um, the next one. It really is a census of the actual facilities. So we're like just measuring a count of facilities that um, have juveniles, so it's really not telling you about the juveniles and residential placement. Um, and then this is more about crime in school. So we definitely have the CJRP is the right answer for this one. And so let's go ahead and click into it because this was a situation where when you click into the survey, it take this is a um, survey the census does for another agency. And so we're gonna have to figure out where to go from here. And one thing that I've discovered it, and it, I can't say it's 100% like this, but frequently um, where I find other um, agencies put data is something they list it as publications or products. So a lot of times on the census website, we want to look for that data, like, you know, a link to data. But on I know this on other websites, sometimes we want to look more for th the term products or publications. And so clicking on here, um, it's going to give you some options of, of what you're going to look for. And so you'll have to dig through a little bit more to get to that data on the website. Um, but some websites actually have data tools too. So hopefully you can um, have an easy time. And the other suggestion that I have is to, if they have contact information and you're having trouble, go ahead and click on the contact information and see if, you know, someone over there can help you out. Um, I know here at the census, you know, we have our Ask Data line. We always love to help people find what they're looking for. So I imagine that that uh, people at other agencies are also very anxious to help you too. Um, all right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint and I will show the answer slide for you. So we show selecting children and crime here, and then I've highlighted the survey that you need, and then a picture of the OJJDP website and what you want to click on is publications and products. All right, so next, we are moving along actually pretty well, everybody. I think we're going to have time for some Q&A at the end, so that'll be good. Um, Everybody can see the screen, screen, correct? Yes. Just want to make sure. I had a weird message pop up for me. So, um, what surveys may may offer the most granular level of geography for disability statistics? And what I mean by granular is what is the smallest um, size geography um, available for disability statistics? So <laughs> this one's a little more tricky. Um, I'm trying to increase the level of difficulty for you. And so I'll give a few minutes for that. 
what survey may offer the most, the smallest level of geography for disability statistics? I've got a couple guesses in the in the Q and A. I think one might be probably the right answer. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've got another correct one. Oops, I keep doing that. Okay, we're at about a minute. Um, I'm in the Q&A. If anybody wants to ask for some more time, go ahead and let me know if you need some more time to think about it or try. All right, I don't see anyone in the chat. So let's go ahead and take a look at the answers. Um, so you're gonna select disability out of the subtopics menu. Hopefully that was very obvious. The tricky part is really, you know, knowing what to select for the smallest level of geography, right? So let's go into the tool a little bit and play. <clears throat> All right, and I apologize for all my throat clearing. I'm kind of getting over a, a sickness still, <laughs> so, um, and my voice is a little froggy, so thank you for your patience with that. Um, all right, so we're going to select disability. Let's scroll for that since. Now, and we go into geographies. So within the menu itself, um, I would say that a city or town or maybe a um, like a city or town would probably be smaller than a county in, in, in some some situations, most situations. Um, and then we have um, zip codes. So I think like a lot of times a zip code, uh, you know, it just just depends on the size. Right. So I would go with you could go here um, to pull something up and the American Community Survey does pull up. The other thing to think about is using the other button because um, we, uh, when we opened that geography and you look down to see what was under, we had the census blocks and block groups and tracks. And so that's something you might wanna look for to see if you really want some granular level data uh, for your geography. Um, so there's very few surveys that offer that level, but um, it's something that you can check out, right? And so I do know that the American Community Survey um, does have some data at track level. And so you can click on that survey and go into, and then you can click on data, right? And so let's go back to the PowerPoint real quick. So. <clears throat> We wanted to, I want to offer a bonus here where we're going to kind of take a look at the ACS because the ACS is actually one of our most uh, important surveys that, that the census does. And so I thought, let's go into the data section of the ACS and talk about that a little bit. Um, it has some of the most variety of data offerings. Um, it's definitely one of our largest surveys. It's conducted continuously. Uh, we release data at a one year and a five year uh, time points. So 
um, it's just a great, great survey to check out. It has a wealth of information. So let's go ahead and go in there. Um, and so I clicked on data already. And right off the bat, it's saying get started in accessing ACS data. And you can go to this tool called data.census.gov. We're going to circle back to that. Um, then you scroll down and we see popular ACS tables. And so you could do social characteristics like disability status. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. <coughs> and it, it actually takes you right into the tool data.census.gov. Um, and it gives you a, a table with social characteristics um, in the, um, in here. So you're, if you scroll down, you know, you'll find some disability. I see grandparents, school enrollment, educational attainment, veteran status, disability status, um, residence, place of birth, citizenship, year of entry, I mean, there's just so much here. Language spoken at home, ancestry. Oh, actually, so that's really interesting because ancestry gets you some more categories here um, to take a look at. So um, outside of the race category. Um, so let's go back. Uh, we could click on another one, demographic. <coughs> I, we did talk about, I did mention that I would go into a demographic table. So uh, when we scroll down, and okay, what I'm looking for is here. Yep, here we go. So we come down to race. So you can have one race, two or more races. Then they offer it by white, by black, or African American, American Indian, and Alaska Native. They actually break it down into a few tribes here. There's Asian, um, and then some subcategories of Asian, other Asian. Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander, uh, some other race. And then there's two or more races too, which I think is really interesting um, as well. So you can like click on those and those offerings are, um, they have some subcategories of like which two or more people pick. Um, <clears throat> and then um, race alone or in combination with, and one nice thing is you can drag these so you can see more if you want. Um, these columns, race alone, or in combination with one or more other races. So there's just a ton of race data in the demographic profile. So I, I promised that I would show that. Hopefully that helps. Um, so there's also um, ethnicity uh, data. So we look at Hispanic or Latino um, as well and non-Hispanic. So you can check that out very easily when you go to the ACS and you click on that demographic housing estimates profile. So if we scroll back down through the ACS data page, um, the other thing that we can point out is they have data tables. Uh, they also have a list of data tools, and then they have a link to their uh, ACS data via the API. So lots of options. Um, I'm gonna take you into the data tables link real quick, um, cause there's some fun stuff here. So you could go into here and there's many options for different types of tables that you can look at. They have a narrative profile, um, which are short analytic reports derived from the ACS five-year estimates. So the, the five-year will get you to more uh, smaller levels. Of more, you'll, you'll have more um, lower level geographies available at the five-year, right, than the one-year um, because the, we've, we've able to, we're able to protect privacy there. And so it, it aggregates five years of data into one release, and we can give you some more tracks that way. Um, <clears throat> and it depends on the variable because we have to we have to uh, make sure that we reach certain privacy thresholds. Um, but the narrative profiles are are a really interesting thing to read if you want to learn about like your geography and get a narrative profile. So the other thing that what you have subject tables. So um, if I click on here, subject tables, you can look at a particular subject of interest, children characteristics or disability characteristics, education attainment. Um, so those are in a way like topic tables to me, right? But then another fun one I'm gonna show you is ranking tables. And this is really 
interesting because you can pick a read through the table titles. They do a pretty good job of the table titles of explaining what's in there, but um, you can just pick through one. I'm just going to randomly pick percent of grandparents responsible for their grandchildren. So I'm going to pick that and then I can open that file. And what it does is it ranks by state, um, you know, the percent of grandparents responsible for their grandchildren by state. So Kentucky has the most uh, grandparents responsible for their children and Rhode Island or uh, has the least out of the, the 50 states and plus DC. So just wanting to highlight some of the really diverse options that the ACS has available. <coughs> the next thing that we're gonna do, I wanna demo for you, is going into data.census.gov and looking for uh, a particular survey that you want um, to have, get data for in that tool, because that tool is probably is like our largest data tool. Not all of our surveys in, are in there, but there are many. And so I want to show you how to search for your survey. So you say you go into Census Survey Explorer and you're like, OK, the decennial census or the current population survey or the ACS has what I want. So I want you to be able to go in there and see, um, immediately start looking. For, for the data. So the best way to do this in, um, is you go to data.census.gov. So if you want to follow along, <coughs> you can. You're going to click on Advanced Search. And then right here in this, this left side, there's a filter panel. And you see the word surveys. So that's what you're going to click on. And then it comes up with the list of surveys for you. And so you know, we have 120 surveys, many of them for other agencies, so they, we don't really have their data in this tool. But like I said, you can find a lot of data here. And um, this tool is constantly expanding and improving and, um, you know, providing more and more data access over time. So here's the American Community Survey. And like I mentioned, you, you're gonna have to pick one year, or five year estimates. So I'm just gonna go with one year. Um, for now and then you'll have to end up picking what type of table profiles you want so uh, i'm just going to go to the, the subject tables and then the next step is to click on tables or you could click on maps if you wanted if you wanted to see the data on the map i'm going to close the filter panels but just by clicking on this little carrot here to give us a little bit more space um, where we can see the data so right now I'm defaulting to the first table, which is an age and sex table. Um, and uh, so it's an age and sex subject table from the American Community Survey one year. And you can actually use this dropdown to change your year um, if you want as well. So um, anyhow, that's how you get to a survey from um, data.census.gov. If you ever wanted to reset your search, you just click on this logo here, the Census Bureau logo, and you can just go right back into advanced search and, um, and start, start again. So that's how you would reset your search. Okay, so I do have answer slides for that. So um, in the presentation um, that you can download later. So we went to American Community Survey, we clicked on data, and then we decided to click on data.census.gov to get in there. And then you click advanced search, surveys, click on your survey, which I picked American Community Survey. For that particular survey, you're gonna need to select uh, one year or five year or supplemental. And then uh, you would select what type of table you want and then you're gonna select tables last. All right, <clears throat> so this is, um, give me one more, one second, I wanna get my notes real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna actually give you an exercise that's not on the slides. <laughs> so I want you to go in to data.census.gov and see if you can find the decennial, uh, decennial census on your own. So that way you can search for a survey in data.census.gov on your own. So real quick, I'll give you like a minute to go in and try that out. And let me know if anybody runs into any issues.
Okay, so you're going to search for the decennial census within data.census.gov. So you go into this tool and data.census.gov. And how do you find, if say your survey that has the data that you need, you, you use CSE and you're like, decennial is the one. So how would you go into this tool and find the decennial census? And I see a question. I um, I don't have Excel on my laptop, but I do have Office uh, 365. Is there a way to view tables if I don't have Excel program downloaded? I I am not actually sure about the answer to that question. I'm hoping one of my colleagues might know. But <laughs> what we can do is get back to you on that. Um, uh, I'm not sure what would happen. A lot of times a computer will actually just like convert it for you. Um, and if, and I know if you're using um, this tool, if you can find the table in data.census.gov, you can choose a CSV instead of an Excel file, I believe. And yep, we got advanced search surveys, decennial. Yep, so the answer, we're gonna have to go ahead and find the decennial together. Hopefully you were able to do it easily on your own as you click on advanced search, you go to surveys, and then you go to decennial census. Yep, and then you can click, you know, what decennial you want. There's a lot of options here. Um, but when you click on that, and you uh, then you would go to tables to see some data. Um, you can also change from right here, like which year, oh, maybe you can't actually do that in this profile. Sorry, I was misspoke, but that's how you would get into the, into there. All right. <clears throat> um, so again, I hope somebody knows what would happen. If, I'm not sure what happens. I know that like my Mac computer will al always convert everything for me. Um, because it doesn't have Microsoft products, but I'm not sure what would happen on a Microsoft computer that doesn't have Excel. All right, so our next, um, the next um, exercise is our last one. Um, this is more for exploration and just some critical thinking where you can get in there and play a little bit. So what surveys? survey or surveys offer the most frequent and the most detailed or smallest level of geography. And so my tip here is approach this question in both ways. So where you're gonna prioritize frequency and then you could run another search and prioritize the geography. So just kind of going in there and guessing and thinking about you know what, what you would select to have the most frequent data release surveys um, or the most low level geography and, and maybe even like combined. So just it's more of a playful exercise and we can go in and talk about it together after a few minutes. And then after that, we'll have some questions. Yep, you can use, you certainly can use other because remember other has the tracks and the locks. All right, I'm going to give about I don't know, 30 more seconds to play around.
Okay, Duke. So um, let's go ahead and talk about it. So if we're going to start with first prioritizing frequency, what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to the tool and select your frequency first. So monthly is really here on this list. Um, other might have something, but you could select monthly for just right off the bat. And <laughs> we're going to see what surveys are monthly surveys. So there's actually quite a few. You're going to find most of the monthly surveys are uh, economic surveys. Um, we have a housing survey as well, uh, which is an economic survey too. Um, the CPS is uh, a has a lot of different data in it, social and demographic as well. So, but really there's mostly economic. But <laughs> if you go into the geographies um, and you wanna select, you could either select like the city town um, and we only have that building permits that pulls up or maybe you wanna try like the next level up from that would be maybe like to I mean, you can try other and uh, again other is going to have maybe track but like you have to really go into it and take a look and i i actually don't think you're going to find any track level data there i could be wrong but, <laughs> but i don't think so um but yeah i think like if you went up from city town to like try maybe county or zip code Oh, looks like we still have that same building permit survey. Um, yep, and there, oops, I have to uncheck county though. And nothing pulled up. So really, it's not a whole lot going on at when you make those monthly, uh, for monthly, and you're like going in that way. So the, the next way that we can reset the search is we're going to prioritize the geography. So again, you know, you could try the city town first, or you could try the other first. Um, and then instead of going in and prioritizing month, uh, monthly, we knew we only got the one survey. Um, we could go in and say, all right, let's check out quarterly. We actually had something different pull up here. So it's the longitudinal employer household dynamics. Um, and we can take a look at those topics. You know, it's giving you some race, sex, education, employment, income, NAIC sector. Um, you know, there's actually a bunch of industries in here. So that's, you know, an interesting survey. The LEHD program always does some fun stuff. Um, and then if we uncheck quarterly and we keep ramping up to maybe like annual, then, you know, we see a bunch of surveys come up here. So we've got the ACS, which we just explored, and we saw the wealth of data that ACS has on social, economic, demographic, and housing. And then we'll see a lot of those same um, economic surveys that we saw in that, that first search where we were prioritizing other stuff. But um, anyhow, there's just so much so many different ways that you can use the tool but it helps you just whittle and refine what you're doing so say okay you know i've got the most granular level um geography at the at the frequency that's acceptable to me and then you can maybe go in and and whittle that down even more and play around with you know which one of these has employment data actually did change much um which one of these might have education day that, right? And um, so you're gonna, it's really interesting to like g approach this tool in different ways. So you, it's all about what is your data question and what's the most important to you? And so it just really depends on your unique needs, but the tool hopefully can help you figure out what it is we have that meets your needs. And that's the whole point. So with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just recap like what we've learned today. Um, oops. <clears throat> All right, so today we've learned about how Survey Explorer can help you in your research. You've learned about what information is in the tool and how the tool is the most useful to you. You've learned how to operate and use the tool and about some common mistakes or some tricky places that you have to think about while using the tool. 
Um, you've also learned some tips for how to go about finding data once you've figured out a survey or two or more that you would like to go in and explore and find out what data it has and where to find the data. And we've even kind of dabbled a little bit with looking up some data, data tables from there. And, you know, we've practiced many scenarios while using the tool and moving from the tool to the data. So I, that was a lot for an hour and a half. I hope that you got a lot out of it and um, you feel more confident in, in being able to go and start looking for, for what you need. Um, I'm going to plug just one quick thing. Like we actually really need your help to spread the word about Census Survey Explorer so, and that valuable tool. So if you wanted to ever post a link to the data gem uh, about Census Survey Explorer, or we actually have badges that you can post a badge like I accomplished this or I learned this, um, you can do that to your friends or colleagues on social media. We would love any support that you could give us. And don't forget that we have this Ask Data line that you can utilize for individual questions or on Census Academy, there's a link to uh, request a training for your organization um, if you have a, a larger organization that needs some training um, from our data dissemination specialist. And so then I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up for some questions. So like utilize the Q&A um, to do that. Would it be possible? <laughs> Thank you for the kudos and um, let me see, Viviana, I know you've been um, monitoring. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of the questions were mostly related data questions. Um, uh, let's see, uh, there was one here. Um, sorry, there was one that just came in saying, can we have more time for, with, um, with more Q&A? Um, let's see, <laughs> yeah, can you discuss what redistricting data is available? what did redistricting data is available so that's more data related um yeah redistricting you know what i i highly recommend you go to census academy and we actually there's a 2020 right up top you click on 2020 data census data and there's going to be a whole slew of resources about redistricting data for you. Um, so definitely go there and it's going to cover a lot for you about like where to find it, how to get it. Um, there's multiple tools. We have a data interactive data visualization, data gem. Uh, and then there's also all the way through how to access the, the FTP. So there's like a lot of information on that in there. Um, I also saw a question about Zigta. Um, Zigta means zip code tabulation area, so um, that's how we say it. Um, let's see if I can answer any more real quickly. I think everything else that I've looked at is mostly um, data related on here. So if anyone else has any other questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in the um, Q&A. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I hope we got to most of them and we will publish answers to some questions, the, as many questions as we can um, in the 30 day, 30 business days when we when we post, we'll actually have a link to Q&A and um, sometimes we'll have to answer stuff and answer things there. So you can look for that in you know a month or so. We always say 30 business days because it's more than a month because it's, you know, only um, probably more like a month and a half. But um, I really enjoyed spending time with you guys today. I hope that this workshop was useful to you and please uh, provide feedback. And we always are looking to improve and we want to do our best for you and provide you what, what, with, uh, what's the most helpful for you and what you need. So feel free to give us some construction constructive feedback on the evaluation. And we really appreciate your interest and time in, um, in this webinar. So everyone take care. Great, thank you very much, Mary, for this excellent webinar. Um, before we conclude, I'd like to thank everyone who played a role in today's webinar. And also, of course, thank you to you, our audience, for spending your time with us this afternoon. Um, please take a moment to fill out our evaluation by following the link that's provided in the chat. And look out for the recording and PowerPoint from this workshop on the Census Academy 
by visiting census.gov slash academy. That brings us to a close. So we thank you again and hope you have a great afternoon. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.